everyone, and good morning. Welcome to the final day of Act 3 here at the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Championships. I'm Ben Zions, your host, and this is Roberto Berto, one of our accomplished safety divers here in the booth with me today, and we'll be calling all the action from what's sure to be a historic day here at Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas. We have not only one, but two, three world records on display for you today, all taking place on the women's side. So we're seeing a heated battle taking place between Sayuri Kaneshita, Alessia Zucchini, and some of the other women here for first place on the podium and overall world rankings as well. So much drama, so much spectacular freediving on display here. But really quick, we're gonna cut over. We have Stefan Toro in the water, ready to attempt a 101 meter constant weight dive and an estimated dive time of two minutes and 30 seconds. The French athlete coming into this event, not quite in his typical form, but has managed to display some excellent technique throughout the week, securing some white card performances deeper than 100 meters. And we're hoping he can cap off this historic event with a dive over 100 meters. What a great way to see Stefan go out. So you've seen Stefan dive a lot throughout the years. How's he looking this year? Yeah, well, he, he's a very consistent diver, uh, very conservative, uh, a fast diver. Yeah, certainly yeah. the fastest in the event other than maybe Adam Sellers, but Correct, certainly the yeah. fastest deep diver in the event. Absolutely. His uh, technique and streamline is flawless. I think he, he prides himself on, on this, um, on his flexibility in, in the water and, and yep. um, his grace. And yeah, it's, it speaks for itself watching um, for the guys at home on dive by they can see it's, it's perfect. Um, once again, a, a very French approach to the sport. Uh, conservative, always announcing dives with, with uh, a lot of the times result in white cards, so it's, it's nice to see. And, and so for you as a safety diver, that's certainly something that has to be, uh, allows you to breathe a sigh of relief um, when you know that you have a diver on the line who more than likely is going to make it to the surface conscious. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Um, having experienced guys like this who, who have a, a calculated approach to the sport um, brings a lot of relief to our job. We we know okay they they're pushing themselves but within within their um, within their limits and also um, they put the hard work and training in prior to coming here not just doing uh, reckless reckless dives yeah for sure and we can see Stefan touching down here at the bottom a little bit of trouble grabbing the tag but he manages to grab it pretty easily and then he'll make the ascent here to the surface so like Roberto discussed earlier this sort of going to be more than likely a formality for Stefan Toro now that he's grabbed the tag. I'm sure we'll see uh, a clean surface protocol at the surface for the Ada judges. And, and talk a little bit about how has Dive Eye sort of revolutionized your job as a safety diver. I'm sure in a lot of ways it's really helped. Before in the old days, you had the diver at the surface, you had maybe scuba divers at depth, um, you had a dive time, an announced dive time that the diver may or, or may not adhere to. We've seen throughout the event sometimes dive times being much quicker and sometimes much longer than what the announced dive time is. Now we can see the athlete all the way to the bottom plate. I'm sure that's got to be something that's helping a ton for the safety team. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. We're getting a better idea of how the diver, um, how they can do their whole dive basically and if there's any issues we can see it well before they they surface to be prepared for it and um and understand what possibly could have gone wrong um it's it's not only changed the sport for us as safeties but for the viewers at home yeah for sure and we can see stefan Toro here taking some deep breaths removing the mask and giving the okay signal to the judges. So the other day he ran a little bit over time, the 15 second window that he had here today, it looks as though that surface protocol was pretty much flawless. Yeah, absolutely. He, um, he's he got a, a good approach, I guess. He went over time, but he was ensuring he, he had enough hook breaths. So to make 
to make himself um, fully conscious. But unfortunately, and he looked complete control of the dive as yeah. well. It wasn't like he went over time and was out of control. He just went over time. Correct. Yeah. So he's um, he's um, well, in a well conscious state. It's just that uh, you have to adhere to that 15 seconds. So yep. it's unfortunate, but um. And, and so certainly something we've talked with all the athletes about during the broadcast and, uh, you know, the rules um, that Ida currently employs designed to sort of protect the athletes. And obviously we've always encouraged that. We want the athletes to be safe here at this event. But we've talked with Alexei Molchanov and Will Truebridge and a lot of the top athletes. And I think there's a general consensus out there that there should be some type of surface protocol. However, the surface protocol should be in some ways maybe turned down or tuned down, I apologize, so that athletes like Stefan Turo, who clearly made a strong dive the other day in competition. For those of you out there, Stefan ascended to the surface, delivered a clean surface protocol. You have a 15-second window in which you have to complete a series of tasks, remove your facial equipment, give the OK signal, say I'm OK, keep the airway above the water. And Stefan didn't do all of those things in time and was penalized and was awarded, I believe, a red card for that dive. Right. And, and so we're, there's talk out there maybe making the surface protocol a little bit easier. Um, is that something that you think m might be a good idea? Yeah, perhaps it, we have to, um, it has to all be a collaborative um, effort, basically. So everyone's yeah. happy. Um, the sport is always developing. Ada tries to be fair for all for all persons involved. So, um, yeah, I, I'm thinking there will be a shift down the track and, and less stringent, but still adhering to safety as the main goal. And so here you see Alexei Molchanov breathing up in his gold wetsuit. Alexei opting for a little shallower dive today. However, he's going to be completing this dive with bifins. So this is actually a tremendous display of free diving that you're about to witness here. Alexi choosing, he has the competition sort of in the bag, guaranteed first place here at the prestigious 10th anniversary of Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Championships here in the Bahamas. And Alexi choosing on his last dive to have a little fun, put his Molchanov's freediving by fins to the test and descend to 100 meters with the split fins. I don't think there's too many people in history who've been below 100 meters with by fins. Absolutely, Ben. It's um, it's an incredible feat, and it's it's something that uh, myself as a spear fisherman can relate a lot um, closer to. It's it's basically our, our feet, our bifins. So um, to see someone take them down to 100 meters and come back is is a real a real good effort. Yeah, for sure. And certainly a testament to the Molchanov's equipment as well. Not only to the Molchanov's family as free divers. We can see the Paralens sticker there in the background, proud supporter of this event, uh, utilized for the bottom cameras and also um, by the safety divers. So you've been diving with a Paralens camera all week attached to your head for many of the national and world records that we've seen. What are your thoughts on the Paralens camera in terms of uh, you know functionality and how it fits, like sort of how it feels while you're diving with it? Yeah, honestly, to. Um when I looked at the camera, it, it's small, it's sleek. I was concerned about its, um, its streamline and if it would get in the way on the dives. But after using it a few times, I honestly barely knew it was there. Having a function that turns itself on once we descend to two and a half meters and turns off within 15 seconds of surfacing, um, the camera, it was basically set and forget. Just yeah. have it on the side of your head and you get gather all the action from mm. all the dives. And so you talked about you do some spear fishing back home. You guide some spear fishing trips in your time off. Same with me. Uh, I, I, I guide spear fishing trips. I also commercially spear fish. And I've been really hesitant to use a GoPro. I've been given the GoPros. I've used them. But the stop and start function and trying to manage all the tasks that I have, it's just another thing sort of to get in the way. And I had the opportunity to use these Paralens cameras. And like you said, the set and forget really makes it sort of something that I want to use now. Yeah, absolutely. I've been. Um, that's been the biggest drawback for me when I'm when I'm spear fishing and diving for myself. I don't like want to focus on um, pushing buttons and, and making sure the angles are all correct. Whilst um, with the paralens, I, I can see this being a, a part of my spear fishing kit now quite easily. Um, turn it on and, and 
off you go and just go about your business as usual. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think it makes the, the functionality of it makes it conducive to people who do want to capture the action, who put themselves in really awesome situations in front of big game fish or diving to deep depths or cave diving or whatever you may be doing with the camera, but it's not something that you actually have to think about during the dives. It sort of operates itself. Correct, and it's got the um, automatic white balance and yep. things like this, so you, your color correction is always going to be true. The um, It's an actual dive camera, so you don't need to worry about flooding the housing. It's, it's built for it, so set the back cap, uh, cap up and way you go basically yeah I think the only uh, action camera right now produced specifically for divers so uh, as Roberto mentioned no housing for the camera um, also uh, we talked about the very nice function of sort of set and forget turns on and off at the surface for you also color corrects underwater so you lose a lot of the red colors when you descend more than 10 meters and then as well with that you can see I believe temperature and depth and duration of the dive so that's kind of a cool feature as well yeah absolutely you can um, know exactly where, where you were on any point of the dive and so someone else who I wonder if they operate on autopilot is Alexei Molchanov the Russian uh, seems to be unstoppable here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue this week just churning out amazing dive after amazing dive yeah his performances are speaking for themselves um, basically hasn't hasn't blinked an eyelid. It's I've been on his deep safety on many of his um you know world class and world record dives and and so earlier this week I'm in the booth. This is my first experience as commentator here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. We had Alexei Molchanov complete a 130 meter uh, constant weight dive, the biggest dive of the of of the entire week, the deepest dive, and um. Roberto Berto was actually the deep safety on that dive and uh, I think that I credited someone else with uh, them being safety on that dive. I believe it was Marco Cosentino who had indicated to me he would be deep safety on that dive. However, it was Roberto Berto, so I would like to give uh, that bit of glory to you. <laughs> yeah, no worries. It's definitely something I'll, I'll never forget. Um, being Certainly. A deep safety on, on a world record dive of that caliber. Yeah, first man to break 130 meters self-propelled. Not too long ago, the variable weight record, descending with a sled, leaving the weight at the bottom and swimming up without the burden of the weight was 130 meters. So, I mean, I remember not too long ago when 100 meters in any discipline, no limits, variable weight was a big deal, and now guys are just shattering that every single dive. Absolutely, yeah. And you can see um, Alexi now, perfect streamlining, and um, just enjoying the free fall with his bi fins. Um, not much knee bend, but his um, his fins are nice and parallel to the line, which is really important in a deep free fall like this. Um, they're not creating any more drag for him. Yeah. I guess he's just probably enjoying the free fall and the silence now before the slog to the surface comes and yeah. and the nice burn, as we call it. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely got the legs for it, though. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can see he puts a lot of effort into his um, cross training and and just his physique show his. Um, showing his results in the water his free fall is flawless you can see his hands by his side all symmetrical and we've seen throughout the week on a couple of close-ups at the bottom he actually grabs the the tag each time with his eyes closed so he uses the line uh with one hand to guide himself down there's a stopper ball on the line that stops the lanyard and it gives the athletes a reference point and then from there he just reaches down, eyes closed, doesn't even blink, nothing, and just turns at the bottom after grabbing the tag and usually makes a very uh, graceful ascent to the surface. I mean, can you imagine how difficult it is to remain calm at 130 meters below the ocean on a single breath of air and try to grab a tag? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he doesn't let the na nitrogen narcosis affect him. Yeah, he still handle. stays composed. Um, basically, just watching him now is, is a great uh, time for anyone at home looking at getting into free diving. This is how we should look underwater. Nice, streamlined, totally relaxed. He's controlling his speed by himself and um, nice and close to the line. And so you teach free diving as well in your spare time. I'm a free diving instructor as well of my own company, Free Dive Hawaii. And one of the things I see from students that uh, get into using bifins, long blade fins for the first time, 
is they get this sort of bicycle kick where you can see sort of Jimmy's doing it a little bit, bending the knee a bunch more. And you see Alexi, the legs are very long, very straight, and the, to the toes are pointed down. And so like you talked about, uh, reducing the water resistance on ascent, allowing Alexi to be much more streamlined and aiding in his success. Uh, we have uh, Alexi just about to break the surface here. Final arm stroke and using these positive buoyancy to guide himself up. Yep. So Alexi looking traditionally very strong at the surface and uh, surface protocol. Great way to end the event for Alexei Molchanov. Really fun dive in the bifins to 100 meters. See what the judges have to say. Yep. Yeah, and so our next dive, Adam Stern from Australia attempting 100 meters in free immersion. This is really going to be where the action starts heating up. We've got a national record on tap from him. Then next up after that, we have Sayuri Kinoshita. Alessia Zucchini just getting bombarded from all angles by these females. She sets a world record and then someone comes back and breaks her, her world record. And it's really these Japanese girls that have been a big thorn in her side. I mean, she just can't shake them. They're coming at her from, from all angles. Uh, whether it be a free immersion world record or it be a Hanaka Hiro say constant weight world record it's just so many contenders here on the female side um, you know attacking those world records of Alessia so we'll see that next up we'll see a big dive from William Trubridge seeing if he can hang on at the surface and deliver the deepest no fins performance of the event and then we also have uh, some national records for Elise Madolo and unfortunately, we're going to see a, um, a no-show from uh, Barbados resident Alex Davis, who will not be attempting his 86-meter free immersion dive today. Obviously, in that second session, all national and world records. I think that's something very unique here to Vertical Blue and that we see so many world and national records in this competition have you ever been part of a competition where you've seen so many world and national records on display no vertical blue is definitely the pinnacle of them um, even at the world championships people have a different approach whilst vertical blue is a time uh, for people to really do their best and, and get those national records in the bag yeah, and that's something that the event actually i think was originally designed for over 10 years ago Will Truebridge sort of organizing his own world record attempts for no fins um, decided that you know it might be you know fun to have divers from around the world come here experience the magic of Dean's Blue Hole and um, perform their own national and world record performances and it's since blossomed into an event where we have divers from around the world who come here and like we've seen throughout the week world record national record performance one after the other and we're about to see Adam Stern here from Australia attempt to descend to free immersion for the first time in Australian history, pulling down the rope to 100 meters. Yeah, this is a pretty uh, close to home one for myself, Ben. Uh, being an Australian myself, um, Adam Stern's definitely someone we aspire to in the freediving community. And it's great to see a, a fellow countryman um, setting so many national records at this event so far and seeing if he can take his own national record uh, one meter further. Yeah, so. and, and into, you know, 80 meters, 90 meters, they all mean something, but 100 meters is definitely, I mean, yeah. we always say, oh, meters and the, and the depth, they, you know, the numbers, they don't matter, but they do. Yeah, three digits is, is where it's at, you yeah. know, like, it's a magic number, 100, and and um, it's something, I, it's on my bucket list, you know, it's it's number one on my bucket list, at the 100 meters, and, and yeah, so we can um we've seen with other divers but we all have the capacity to get there with uh, dedication and training and and adam is a true testament to that he's, he's put the hard yards in you follow him on instagram and and um his stories and being a, being a friend of him i see that the work he does and the dedication to travel around the world you know expenses off his own back at times so yeah i asked adam earlier how he uh manages to support all his training and he jokingly said credit cards
So Adam relaxing at the surface in the upright position, similar to like what we saw from Alexei Molchanov. Certainly a more versatile breathe up position uh, lends itself to a wide variety of ocean conditions. Something that breathing up on the back um, is sort of limited to really calm conditions, which certainly here at the Blue Hole would work. Um, but when you go to other areas and you're diving in open ocean, Hawaii, Australia, World Championships in Roatan, uh, can be sort of a, a little bit more challenging to re ma maintain that comfort level on your back. Yeah, absolutely. Using the noodle just between the legs is um, my preferred preferred way to breathe up on the line. Same um, here. For a bike fins or free immersion dive. Adam packing. Last of the year needed. Just a practice pack getting his lungs accustomed to it. Yeah, it's interesting that we saw uh, Thibaut Guignas, he does like three rounds of practice packing before the dive. Yeah. It's actually the first time I'd ever seen anybody do that in the water um, right before a dive. And so I'd always thought that the preferred mentality was really deep relaxation, maybe the old school tradition, a couple of deeper purge breaths before you start mm -hmm. your max inhale and packing or sort of the new school approach to go straight from that like super relaxed state right into a big inhale and then add the packing. But we're seeing some of these athletes on the line uh, sort of preparatory pack before the dive. Yeah, we, it'd be interesting to know how much of it is actually nerves to um, prepare themselves mentally as well. Mm. Um, so when the final, the final breath comes, they're, they're mentally prepared and they, they know their belly and, and chest is totally relaxed to uh, take that amount of air in. And in the old days where you would see a, like sort of excessive maybe hyperventilation at the surface uh we saw some whiteouts mm -hmm. most yeah. notably i think was uh was it tanya streeter on the no limits attempt yeah i believe so yeah. <laughs> who whited out at the surface yeah. and came to mm -hmm. and then took a deep breath and then still descended to 170 meters and no limits yeah that was pretty pretty crazy interesting crazy times yeah definitely crazy times the wild west in the sport of free diving mm -hmm. And so you see Adam will now uh, take some real packs, meaning the packs he's actually going to utilize to make the dive. Outfitted head to toe in his Molchanov's free diving equipment. So Adam now a Molchanov's instructor as well. And I think that's pretty cool. Wow. Adam cutting it fine. Did he make it in time? Yeah, well, we'll find out, dude. Mm -hmm. The last I heard was 29, and he possibly started his dive in time. So, for guys at home unsure, you have to start within 30 seconds of the official top. So, the official top is an actual time when the uh, when you have to dive. So, you can't deviate. You only can deviate 30 seconds past this time, and you can't dive before this time in the day. So, um, Adam spending a bit of time packing. So, hopefully. It's, um, he was he was done in time. We'll find out when he completes his dive. So that's another rule I've never understood. You have five minutes. You're on the line. You're allowed to breathe up, right? Yeah. Why can't you start your dive whenever you want? Yeah, I guess it's just to make it fair for all athletes. That's a level playing field, basically, Ben. Yeah. Um. So and it, it shows a true athlete. You know, they can perform under under any circumstances, any pressure, and any time, basically. These um, announcements these days, they're, they're being so big, so a deeper dive, you know, whilst in the past we've been in the middle session when we typically have our, our deep dives, it's now at the end of the day when the, the shallower dives. And so one thing we're seeing on these deeper dives is divers starting their sink phase at a much later depth. Uh, Adam. And uh, yeah. Adam starting his sink phase there at 40 meters, which traditionally yeah. athletes Turn. in the past would be uh, somewhere in the realm of you know 25 to 30 meters. We've seen Omar Leucci of Italy doing these really deep free immersion dives, starting his sink phase at 60 meters. Yeah, yeah, it's something. Um, it's, it's it's dependent on the individual and, and diver is being able. You know, whilst in the past you'd have to ask in every individual about this, but now with diver we can see. Unfortunately for Adam, he turned early around about 62 meters. Um, perhaps he's happy with where he's at. Um, it's the last day of competition. All the athletes are, are, are fatigued. It's been a, 
a long but um, amazing competition. Um, and so it's going to be spectacular to see how fatigue affects these women. Sayuri Kaneshita attempting yet another world Matt record Jesus. in free immersion. She just had her free immersion record snatched away by Alessia Zucchini, and she says, oh, no, you didn't. I'm coming back, and I'm taking that one back to Japan with me, 97 meters. And then we have a couple other performances later in the day from Alessia Zucchini and Hanaka Hirose. So on all these national and world record attempts, it's going to be diff interesting to see um, if the difficulties of a long competition play a factor in those dives. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, some people thrive off the competition, and, and that's when they really get going. Here we have Al Adam coming to the surface. And so, surface protocol. Yeah, not to, not the day for Adam to uh, to make it to the 100 meter club in free immersion. He has had a fantastic week, set a bunch of new national records for Australia. So, nothing to be disappointed about for Adam this week here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. Certainly one of the more inform athletes throughout the week, um, and I'm sure that uh, we're going to see even even deeper performances and, and definitely a completion of that 100 meter free immersion dive at some point in the near future from Adam. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think it's been a good experience for him uh, all round, having his partner here with him um, to share the joys and um, and be be a part and, and coach him through through some of the struggles as well would be a, a definite help. It's, um, it's always a nice thing if you could have someone close to you here at the competition and share these magical experiences with you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and so your girlfriend? Yep. Your girlfriend is also on the safety team here at Origin ECN and Vertical Blue. I'm sure that's a nice uh, thing to be able to share with your partner. Absolutely. So Yaka's, um, this is her second time here at, um, at Vertical Blue as safety and crew. Um, this year she's been developing the start list and the results list. So we have, we've had our hands full every, every night until quite late, but... Um, yeah. It's what we, what's what we love. We love being around the athletes and, and Dean's Blue Hole and, and the atmosphere here is, is magical. And so Adam delivering the OK signal to the dive eye camera, obviously coming up uh, well short of his intended depth. The dive being quite easy for Adam in terms of breath hold capacity. And next up, the mighty, mighty soy sauce. <laughs> Sayuri Kenoshita, or as we say in Hawaii, the mighty, mighty Shoyu. It's definitely been a battle between um, rice and pasta, as we <laughs> like to say in the safety team. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what's a deeper food? Yep. This? So we have Alessia Zucchini from Italy. Obviously, the Italians quite well known for their pasta dishes. And then we have Sayuri Kenoshita and also Hanaka Hirose, her coach you see on the platform there with her today really giving Alessia a run for her money in the constant weight and free immersion disciplines. I was interested to see if Sayuri might give a run at the no fins uh, world record, which was recently broken by Alessia, but here uh, uh, opting to go for the uh, free immersion, pulling down the rope discipline and uh, try to uh, take that, re that record away from the Italian Alessia Zucchini, who just said it the other day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um Watching Sayuri's free immersion dive, um, her world record free immersion dive the other day, she seemed really relaxed. I think she came out of that dive with a, a nice positive experience. And perhaps she wants to finish the comp with a similar experience once again. Um, really slow but controlled um, descent and ascent. So, uh, and, and so we already have the woman 107, 106 currently attempted 107. So I'm assuming we're going to see. 107 meter world record um, here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. We're seeing 97 meters in free immersion. We have a 73 meter uh, world record. Was it 73 for the no fins? 73, I believe. 73 or 74. Yeah. So somewhere around there yeah. for Alessia Zucchini. So I think in a very short time, we're going to be seeing 110s in constant weight from the women. We're going to be seeing 100 meter free immersion performances from the women and 80 plus meter no fins dives at the top levels of women's free diving. I don't think anybody could have uh, anticipated that even two or three years ago. No, the, the sport has just you know, boomed and, and it's, it's amazing to see what humans are, 
are possibly capable of. Um, with Dive Eye, we're hoping people at home have a bit of inspiration to just while they're sitting on the couch or while they're watching some of the stream, hold their breath and there might be some talents amongst, amongst yeah. the people. Well, hopefully even... some inspiration to get off the couch yeah, absolutely. and get in the ocean. Yeah, take a free diving course. Take a free diving course. All of the competitors in this year's event, we have competitors from 40 plus countries, all of which teach free diving courses in their own language at some point throughout the year, probably in an area close to you. So there's free diving instructors that are uh, disciples of these athletes. There's so much instruction out there. If you want to progress in the sport of free diving, take a class. And if you have the opportunity to take a class with one of the athletes here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue, even better because you know you're getting the most current information. The athletes in this event constantly changing ideas and information between each other, equipment techniques, equipment, uh, uh, equipment uh, information, technique development, psychological development, training methods, diet, exercise, you name it, you're getting the forefront of free diving education here from these athletes at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. Yeah, absolutely, Ben. I can I can attest to this information. When I um, started, like I was always adaptive in the water, and I thought I was a pretty good spear fisherman. I could dive 28 meters, and I thought oh, I'll go to um, Thailand to learn to free dive. And the first day of my free diving course, I learned more than I had done in the years I learned from fellow spear fishermen. Um, and I knew it was a good choice to spend six weeks in Thailand and, and dedicate myself to the sport from then on. Um, since then, I, I can't encourage people to, to do freediving courses enough. The, the mm -hmm. things you're going to learn are going to be a lot more than you can get off YouTube or anything like this. No one's going to give good information away for free, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we see that in other sports where people will pay the money to go to swim camp or they'll pay the money to go to baseball camp or football camp or you name it soccer camp and uh it's the same way with freediving a lot of these athletes organize camps throughout the year i host william Trubridge every year in hawaii or well, at least last year we will be probably doing it again this year in hawaii and we offer a five-day master's class and it's essentially a camp for people interested in learning the secrets of deep freediving and i know it was a tremendous eye-opener for me this year to participate in that class and then even being here throughout the week, just watching all these dives, talking to the athletes, and figuring out when they set their alarms, um, what types of foods they're eating, how they train, what they think about. It, this has been like taking 10 free dive classes. It's been an unreal experience. And here we're about to get a lesson in free immersion um, from Sayuri Kinoshita. So we have Adam Stern on the bottom of the screen. This is not Adam Stern. This is Sayuri Kinoshita attempting the world record in free immersion in an estimated dive time of three minutes, 56 seconds. That's a huge dive. If this dive runs over four minutes, it will be the longest dive we've seen from a female in competition here at Vertical Blue. Astounding performance underway by Sayuri Kinoshita. Passing 40 meters, and this is where she starts her sink phase. You see Sayuri tucking her fingers into her belt around her waist, looking so relaxed in the free fall. And I love watching the Japanese divers. They're so relaxed. They're just goofing around. They make it look easy. Yeah, absolutely. They, um, they bring their own fan club with them, and, and the spirits are always high, no matter what the results are. Um, they're there for every step of the way for each other. So Yuri, perfect free fall once again. Hands tucked in, head in a neutral position. Approaching 70 meters. And Sayuri, already a 100 meter diver in constant weight. So free immersion certainly lending itself to increased relaxation. I think there's a really good chance we're gonna see her make the plate meaning equalization will prevail. You can see she's using her feet just as a rudder, just to guide her yep. through the water. We saw that with Michael Board and quite evidently with the monofin, and she touches down, grabs the tag. History is made. Yeah. Cheers all around from the, from the team in the water. Tag has been placed behind her head on a bit of Velcro strip. Mm -hmm. Certainly making it as easy as possible to collect that tag. 
I see some divers still tucking the tag in their hood and it certainly takes a bit longer to get the tag in the hood. For the divers at home, Velcro on the thigh, Velcro on the neck weight or the wrist, certainly gonna be a much easier way for you to retrieve that tag in competition. I guess now, um, so Yuri's just gathering her thoughts, trying to maintain total relaxation, but still um, wake up for a conscious state to perform a surface protocol. Yeah, for sure. You know a lot about these type of dives. Your personal best in this discipline, over 80 meters. So Yeah, 91 yeah. meters in Dominica. Yeah, awesome. This last year. So. Yeah, 91 meters. So diving very close uh, to the depths of Sayuri Kenoshita, I'm sure we'll see you passing that 100 meter mark uh, in the future. Uh, it'd be great to see. Yeah, let's go. So safety divers in view. Here we go. Chris McKay, another fellow Australian. First safety meeting her quite deep and a nice reassurance basically when you've done such a big performance and letting her know with three fingers that she's at 30 meters and so as a safety diver what are you looking for from basically, the athlete basically we're looking at um body language we try and get right close to the face and see what you know if the face is um relaxed or, or clenched also body language um, obviously sayuri is totally relaxed she's not tensing not expelling any air Things are going pretty good so far. Uh, I'd be fairly confident to say she'd be fine for the most part, um, but we still need to stay totally attentive until the, the final seconds. Yep. <laughs> Amazing performance. Amazing performance, yeah, for sure. Got the fan club cheering her on, yep. waiting for the uh, the judges card. And so certainly a, a large amount of camaraderie between the Japanese yeah. athletes. It's a white card. Beautiful. That's another world record at Vertical Blue ECN. Yep, another Origin ECN Vertical Blue world record. A big hug from Hanaka Hirose who will see at 11.33 Eastern Standard Time attempting to battle it out with Alessia Zucchini of Italy for the coveted constant weight world record for the females. Yeah, I think it's quite amazing that uh, Hanako has acted as a perfect coach in this, in this scenario. In only a couple of hours time, she has to um, perform a world record herself. So. It just shows how relaxed they are. Yeah, absolutely. They, they put the hard yards in, done the training, so now it's playtime basically.
So next up, another Japanese athlete, Masuzu Okamoto, attempting 95 meters in constant weight. Masuzu has been looking very strong throughout the week, and the Japanese athlete will be attempting to expand on that success with her monofin here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. Mizuzu has been a pleasure to work with over the years. Um, she's a regular here at Vertical Blue. Um, her approach to free diving is, is beautiful. It's, it's, she, uh, her personal, this will be a personal best for her today. She's um, one of the most seasoned uh, female Japanese divers and most experienced. Um, speaking with Mizuzu last year, um, more intrigued about her approach to free diving. It was apparent that she only started freediving when she was actually 30 years old, so much later in life. And she started freediving because she had a desire to swim with dolphins. Um, so she learned to be accustomed to the water, not even being a swimmer prior to this. Um, some 10 years later, she's a, in a world-class calibre and, um, and still developing on her skills. So. It just shows there's a there's a mermaid or merman in everyone out there. If you want to do it, you can. Absolutely. Like and, and descending to 95 meters is, you know, a world class effort now. Yeah. So in, in, in free diving, one thing that we see is there's there, there's two real routes that one people can go, and seconds. they don't have to be separate from each other. You have the competitive route, which we see a lot of free divers dedicate themselves towards you know diving for depth diving for numbers or personal exploration whatever you have uh, but that's diving on a static line up and down a lot of the diving is done with your eyes closed or without a mask there's really not much to see and then we also have recreational diving spear fishing photography interacting with marine and wildlife and so one thing i can certainly say in my experience what? someone who does a lot of uh, both is that the free diving on a line has really expanded my maximum capabilities to be able to do all those other things much more successfully. Yeah, absolutely. If you know you can um, do a certain depth on the line, you know you can do half of that um, whilst undertaking an activity. Um, once again, it, it's a really good, and it, it teaches you correct um, streamlining and technique in the water. Uh, so for every spear fisherman out there or photographer, they, they can really take something away from learning how to dive on the line properly. Um, whether it's making your descent and ascent nice and straight, so you're minimizing your time um, going through the water column, basically. Yeah, all the skills that you learn through line diving, through a free diving course, how to breathe properly, how to swim more effectively, are all things that are either going to allow you to spend more time underwater or catch more fish Absolutely. or take better photos, whatever it may be. And so that's why I encourage people, you know, even like yourself who are already diving to 100 feet um, and were accomplished spear fishermen to take a free diving course. There's a tremendous amount. There's a wealth of information out there that you can learn uh, through applying the techniques that these deep divers are utilizing. And we're about to see a display of free diving from the Japanese athlete, Masusu Okamoto, who's gonna be attempting to dive to 95 meters with her monofin. And I'm sure with that type of depth and breath hold, she can probably uh, interact quite nicely with dolphins. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think she's achieved her goal uh, many times over now. Mizuzu's been quite the role model for a lot of the, um, the Japanese female athletes. Um, she was an instructor for my partner, Sayaka Itakaki, when she started free diving and, um, and still is a, a role model to Sayaka. So it's... Um, it's quite mind-blowing for Sayaka to work alongside Mizuzu now and, and be a safety. Yeah, certainly a special treat for a lot of these safety divers to come here and get to meet um, their heroes uh, that are the athletes at this competition and uh, share information with them, watch them dive, assist them in their world and national record performances or personal best dives. Zuzu's allowing the line to run just past it through her hand and touch down perfectly at the plate and straight up with her arms above her head for ma maximum streamlining. 80 meters.
And so just about two minutes into this dive here from Misusu Okamoto. It's amazing to see Mizuzu um, being so basically in touch with the sport and over the years and, and still developing and to see her perform personal best right now is, uh, is quite quite amazing. Yeah, so a personal best, constant weight dive from Misusu Okamoto. Once again, nice and relaxed ascent. She has a nice slow mermaid style to the surface. Another diver we can relax as safety divers when she's diving. Very consistent. And so tremendous safe. female diver in her own right, Lily Crespi meeting her at depth, one of the uh, staff instructors at Dahab Freedivers, accompanying Misusu Okamoto to the surface. Cheers for Mizuzu. And so a little bit of underwater celebration there from Mizuzu. Yeah. Such an iconic day for Mizuzu and the Japanese freediving team. And she has the tag in the hood, the old school approach. Yep. You know you're not going to lose it in the hood. That's I it. think that's the good news about yeah, yeah. the hood. It might take a little more time to stuff it in there, but you're not going to lose the tag. And a white dive. And so you see in an effort to gain a bit stronger dive response, the dive response being something that lowers your heart rate during the descent, or during throughout the entirety of the dive, but typically kicks in on your descent. And then also removing a little bit of rubber from the wetsuit, the divers can wear a little bit, a little bit less weight. We see divers like Will Trubridge, who's up next, without a hood. So yeah. the opportunity to tuck a tag into the hood really is non-existent. And you'll see Will slapping that tag on his thigh on some uh, Velcro that he's attached there to his wetsuit. Masusu starting her free fall. Touching down at the bottom, grabbing the tag. So good turn at the bottom. And then a clean surface protocol for the judges. With a big smile. And so next up, a performance that I'm very excited about. No fins freediving. The most demanding discipline in self-propelled freediving. Here we have the king of no fins freediving, Will Truebridge, the undisputed king, attempting on his home turf here on Long Island in the Bahamas at Dean's Blue Hole to set what would be the deepest no fins dive of the event if he can complete this dive successfully. He had a little bit of wobble at the surface the other day. It looked as though maybe the safety divers had jumped in and touched him a little too early. Will was battling through the protocol at the surface. Really tough decision for the safety divers to make in a situation like that, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the last thing we want to do is intervene and uh, uh, in disqualify an athlete after such an epic performance. But um, usually at this point, we're uh, instructed by the judges. Yeah. If the judges say grab, um, we have to put feelings aside and do our perform our job and, and grab the athlete before any water enters the airway basically so it's interesting to see if in the future that decision i mean safety is something that's evolving as much as the athletes training techniques and as much as the equipment and as much as everything in free diving and and so it's interesting to see if in the future that decision might just be left to the safety team yeah, absolutely. Um, it's something I'd like to see happen because a judge could be distracted whilst our... Um, I think you know these athletes uh, yeah. better. Yeah, we, we've spent uh, many weeks prior to the event um, safety diving with the um, athletes and getting to know them on a personal level and understand exactly what's happening in their day-to-day -day routine so we can gauge how, how they're going in their dives. And so this isn't just safety that starts in the water for those of you out there. The safety team is constantly rehearsing 
safety drills both before the event starts during the event after our depth diving sessions even though they're tired hungry and want to go home really a huge huge level of commitment to excellence to make sure that all the divers in this event go home from here in the Bahamas safely happy and healthy and so um, I think that as we see the sport of freediving progress you're gonna see more and more sort of, I wouldn't call it leeway, but more kind of autonomy uh, allowed to the safety divers to sort of make their own decisions in these instances based on how well you guys know these athletes. The, the safety diving goes as far back as two weeks before the competition where you guys have been safetying these athletes in training. We have nightly meetings where some of the athletes come over, the athletes meet with the medics to make sure they're in good physical condition for diving. So really a huge, huge effort gone in to making sure that the athletes in this event are safe and protected by the team that we've assembled here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. And I would think that this is probably, you know, not only is it the most prestigious freediving competition in the world, we have the best athletes in the world, but we also have the highest level of, of safety divers and safety support crew assembled here in the Bahamas for this event as well. Yeah, thanks, Ben. It's, it's a true compliment, uh, but it's something I I, um, I work up to through the whole year. You know, I pride myself on, on being the best I can be. I, I train really hard um, throughout the year leading up to this event so I can be in the best physical form, which will, will keep me in the best mental form for the, uh, for the high stress dives. Um, especially on day nine of competition when it's today would be uh, day 23 in the water for me um, straight and trying to do my own dive so um, being fit and, and have a good understanding is, is essential basically. Yeah for sure and I know myself uh, you know having uh, competed in, in a couple of free diving events knowing that the safety divers are diving to the level that you are I mean I've never had a safety diver in an event that's diving to the level that you are but that certainly lends just a huge amount of confidence in your ability to go and push forward with your personal best performances. Yeah, absolutely, and understanding what what a diver requires when they're on the line, just perhaps the silence in the um, in the competition area, or or what their mental state would be prior to the dive. So just trying to reassure them. Um, and so, for instance, you know, here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue, all of the safety divers required to dive deeper than 40 meters perform rescues at 30 meters, which is quite deep. But we also have, you know, divers like yourself diving the 90 meters as a personal best. We have several other divers that are all well over 60 meters. Um, so, I mean, fantastic free diving competitors sort of in their own right and then donating their time basically to be here and safety of these athletes, I'm sure, is a huge confidence booster for these amazing group of divers. And we're about to see, for many years, the king of the sport of freediving, event organizer, William Truebridge, director of Vertical Blue, attempt a 93 meter, no fins dive, the deepest of the event so far. He attempted this dive just the other day, couldn't battle through the surface protocol, and he's back here again today. So I think, you know, take a little bit of glory away from, you know, from the, from this week, you know, Alexi's certainly been the informed diver throughout the event, just so hard to beat the Russian with 130 meters constant weight, world record performance, 125 meters free immersion, world record performance, 92 meters no fin, staggering performance from the Russian to really complete the deal. And Will's going, you know what, I got to get something out of this. Second yeah. place, I know that's not what Will was looking for, but you know what, first place in no fins, I think that's some salvation. Yeah, for sure. This is, um, Will is the godfather of no fins, basically. You you just need to watch his dive and, and see how, how perfect he's got it all refined. Nothing changes he, from his uh, the amount of strokes he does to the way he pushes off the line to start his dive. He, he runs like a well-oiled machine. 60 meters into his sink phase now, once again, hands it, fingers are tucked into his elastics around his thighs. He will uses his feet as a bit of a rudder to guide him nice and straight down the line, so no spiraling. And so I'll actually be here for a few weeks after the event trading with Will, and as excited as I am, I'm also a bit nervous. Uh, 
having to do your job basically in safety of these massive performances by the New Zealander, it's definitely a bit daunting for sure. Uh, when the rest of everyone goes home and it's gonna be just me and this animal here <laughs> Yeah, but he's um, diving in the blue hole. Yeah, in his home turf on his home turf Beautiful turn off the bottom yeah, and we're just looking so relaxed on the ascent Super strong he expressed he hasn't really put as much time into the no fins diving as he has in years past I'm um, really kind of focusing on his technique with the monofin and then chasing that free immersion record that he attempted earlier this week um, but had some difficulty with overpacking at the surface and so even without training still attempting 93 meters I mean there's really no one doing that yeah no that's he's um he's a leader in, his, in the class um and and understandably he's had a had a few hard dives but being the event organizer I'm sure he has a lot of late nights organizing logistics of can't people. even imagine trying to organize freediving's most prestigious event and then compete in it as well yeah, and, and for eight years was the winner every single year and then last year Alexi with his first win again Alexi with his first win this year you know nothing to take away from Alexi he's a tremendous athlete but certainly coming to freediving's premier depth diving location with nothing to focus on but diving makes things a little easier yeah absolutely here we go jimmy montanti sicilian free diver a close friend of william and Medium. so william i'm sure learned a bit from the dive the other day always a technician i'm sure they're going to give him a little bit more space today at the surface he's looking nice and relaxed hopefully yeah, and this should be will's last voice. Stroke for the surface. Take the nose clip off. There's a signal. Said the words. If he gets this, it'll be a nice finish for Will at his own event. Yeah, I think it'd be a great day. way to end the event for Will Sherbridge. He's got the tag. He's waiting for the judges. He looks happy. Fantastic way to end the event for current undisputed world record holder in no fins freediving, William Trubridge. And so I'm sure he's very excited about finishing up the competition with the deepest dive in his really favorite discipline. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, um, he can deserve cold drink tonight yeah uh, for not only putting on an amazing show for everyone all the athletes and and pe persons involved in vertical blue but some amazing dives at the same time and so for those of you out there who are interested in getting into the sport of competitive freediving or who want to be competitive people who are already competing I think it's something to take note of in that Will, Alexi, Omar Leucci, the divers at the top of this year's rankings for the men. And then we have on the women's side, Sayuri Kinoshita and also Alessia Zucchini, all delivering big performances with no fins. And so we've seen th so many of the athletes in this event focus on the monofin, focus on pulling down the rope, but really most people shying away from the no fins discipline and it's interesting from a competitive standpoint or from a tactician standpoint that so many divers not going for the overall placement in the event really just focusing on sort of the two what would generally be considered easier disciplines yeah for sure it show uh, in my eyes it shows a well-rounded athlete if you can completing all three disciplines um, and and can perform well in the pool you really are grasping the sport of free diving from all angles yeah um, it's something it gains a lot of respect um, being a fellow fellow athlete and safety diver um, the guys are putting in the hard yards all around and, and I think it's safe to say that if you have big no fins performances any other dive that you do is just gonna be easier yeah absolutely and so if you're doing you know 
whatever depth it may be, no fins, and you're really making that your focus, I think with very little training, so to speak, free immersion is pretty easy discipline in, in that capacity. Yeah. I mean, you don't really have to have a tremendous amount of technique to pull up and down a line. I think that's the discipline that most people sort of prefer when they start free diving because you can control the rate of descent much easier. Yeah. And then the monofin, sure, that takes some time and technique to develop. But even if you're doing the dive with bifins, it's going to be a heck of a lot easier than it is just propelling yourself with unassisted without fins. Yeah, absolutely. Every stroke is a calculated calculated effort um, raising the arms above the head and, and stroking down and also the leg kick it needs to be all within time to make it the most efficient yeah. way to, um, to propel yourself through the water column whilst um, you know the on free immersion usually we have the rope as a, a safety blanket so to speak Even I've noticed in my own um, my own training, Ben. Um, at times, I'll dedicate to the to the no fins discipline. Um, it's a nice relief not having to go so deep, but it's also a nice push for the um, the physical side of things. Upper body strength and lower body strength combined in one. Um, you also need good flexibility whilst because whilst you're raising your arms. Um, at depth and completing a stroke, you could easily get injured in the, yeah. in the chest. So. And, and so what Roberto is uh, addressing is that when you're starting to dive, you know, generally deeper than your residual volume of your lungs, 30 to 40 meters and deeper, um, that abrupt movements at depth can uh, traumatize uh, or create barotrauma in the lung tissue. And so unless you've developed adequate flexibility in your chest, and then also something that, you know, medically speaking, the doctors might not agree with, but flexibility in the lung tissue as well, that you can actually rupture that tissue and create uh, like a form of pulmonary edema uh, that results in bleeding in the lungs. And so we've seen a lot of different protocols established throughout the years to protect athletes, but free immersion and then also no fins diving, certainly lending themselves to an increased risk of long squeeze and so unless you've really developed the adaptation as we call it um adaptating adaptating yourself to the pressures that we um in, encounter at depth um you could easily easily squeeze or injure your lungs in those no fins and free immersion disciplines and so yeah something to be very cautious of yeah a, a slow and steady approach is always best for free diving and you can see it um people aren't born natural deep divers they, they get there through hard work we saw an amazing display from Mizuzu Okamoto before 95 meters after 15 years of diving you know and a personal best after 15 years so and, and still has a, a deep passion for the sport so and that's what we want to encourage people like um, slow steady progression meter by meter and making sure the dives are comfortable mm. um, to not only ensure the, the physical safety of your body, but also the mental side. If you know you, your dives are enjoyable and, um, and you can do them easily, you know you can go into your next dive adding one meter safely. And so something I've certainly noticed with freedivers in general throughout the years and something that Goran Kolak, um, pool champion and now very accomplished, becoming a very accomplished depth diver, um, talks about in his uh, excellent podcast uh, in the Freediver Cafe um, is freedivers starting to approach freedive training like a real sport. And when I say a real sport, I mean applying the same type of fitness training that you would see in other major sports like baseball, basketball, football, hockey, lacrosse, you name it. And I think that that's a big change in freedivers in general, and we're seeing that with Will, we're seeing that with Alexi, Omar Leucci, Alessia, Sayuri Kinoshita, and I think it's lending a huge amount to their success. Absolutely, it's um, in their off season they're still doing something, when they're not in the water, they're applying themselves in the gym or in the field and, and things like this. And Tetsuo Hara, another Japanese. Yep, another uh, Japanese yeah. athlete, and he's attempting here with the monofin to, to to dive to 90 meters. So Tetsu have been very solid. Again, the Japanese uh, seem to announce performances that they can complete. 
Yeah, absolutely. Tatu has um, been very consistent and a pleasure to um, to safety and, and watch perform this year. You see, just passing 45 meters, he charged his mouth fill. Just before 30 meters, his hand came up to his mouth. This is to hold any excess um, pressure he has in his mouth from the air escaping. He's gonna use that air to equalize all the way to the bottom, hopefully. Yep, we've talked a lot about mouth fill throughout the week, and Tetsuo certainly finding a way to maximize his mouth fill. So you can take the mouth fill, and you can use your hands just by your side, so like a lot of the athletes do, facilitating relaxation. But if you struggle to take a big enough mouth fill, or maybe lose some of the air when you're taking a big mouth fill, certainly one thing you can do is sort of purse your lips and put the tip of your fingers like you see there to the to to the lips and that will help to kind of take maybe a bigger mouth fill or help maybe retain the air that you're you're bringing up yeah absolutely so a turn from Tatsuo not the most controlled uh, he was a bit far from the rope so he, he couldn't guide himself but he got the tag uh, arms above his head and he's on his way back to the surface and so it's interesting you know in in the past free diving had this very like sort of zen and meditation quality for the athletes and that everything was really easy and that you just kind of really enjoyed the dives and while that's certainly the case i think it's pertinent to people out there who are aspiring to compete at these levels that you're not going to get there without hard work and sacrifice absolutely ben it, it, it's like you said you need to treat it as a a, a regular sport and um you know, unfortunately, going to the gym every morning or every afternoon and doing laps in the pool is not always zen and, and beautiful. It, no. It's hard work and you need to incorporate a good diet. And, and so if you want to make these dives something you're going to enjoy and you're going to want to make them easy and things that like these athletes describe as beautiful, enjoyable mm -hmm. moments, you're not going to get to these depths unless you put the hard work in, in the gym with your diet, with your exercise, and also in the pool or in the ocean, it's hard work. And we're seeing that paying off in spades for many of the athletes here at Vertical Blue. So just want to put a little bit of a, address the fact that these athletes, how hard they work year round, and most of them with little to no sponsorship help whatsoever. Absolutely. Here we have the tool performing surface protocol. Yep. Hopefully within time and within the right right order we'll wait for an announcement Tetsuo's got the tag will it be a white card performance for the judges on the final day here of the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving yeah. Championship I think he'd be very happy with himself and for his country his, all his country people watching at home in Japan yeah for sure certainly a big contingent uh, freediving becoming very very popular in Asia and uh, Tetsuo uh, clearly at the forefront of uh, that success. And so I think dive eye, free diving, you know, I think this is revolutionary for the sport. Broadcasting free diving worldwide, live. Now we have commentary, we have, you know, really the full package starting to come together. I think that hopefully, potentially, maybe free diving starting to get a little bit more financialist free divers starting to try to starting to get a little bit more financial assistance uh from some companies out there absolutely yeah you can see tatua for example the suit he's wearing a Salvamar fluid suit he's um is a suit now you can get off the shelf uh in your local dive store this was a thing non-existent in the past to get a specialized free diving suit you had to contact someone in europe and get a custom made suit whilst now it's in our local dive stores yeah. and making really high performance equipment. People like Selma, they're seeing the potential that people actually do enjoy this sport and anyone can participate. So Yeah, in past years, you know, um, myself included wearing triathlete suits, wearing spearfishing suits to do these mm -hmm. performances in, and now we're actually getting equipment that caters to these performances and is helping to improve the sport. So companies uh, not only associated with the sport of freediving taking note but I think that there's also going to be uh, you know sort of um, an awareness out there from other companies that are you know producing organic healthy uh, 
eco-minded conscious products that they're really going to realize that they can capitalize on the image of freediving to help promote their products as well because you know without uh, the focus on health and consciousness mm -hmm. from these freedivers i don't think they'd be achieving the performances that they are absolutely they all go hand in hand um of course we all like a bit of junk food once in a while and <laughs> to splurge and enjoy ourselves but um you know healthy body healthy mind is is a is a key and i think that would certainly be the consensus here amongst the majority of these freedivers living a very healthy positive conscious lifestyle and you can see we have some great sponsors supporting this event origin ecn trading network you can see Sunto Dive making the highest quality depth gauge for freedivers. Been sponsoring this event since its inception for over 10 years now. We have Paralens Action Cameras now producing cameras <laughs> dedicated to divers. Um, we also have Ada International, the sanctioning governing body of freediving worldwide, doing a ton to support the, for the sport of freediving since its competitive inception. And then also certainly the beautiful islands of the Bahamas without this event could not be possible. So much fun stuff to do here in the Bahamas. And um, I know you as an avid spear fisherman and, and myself included, I've really enjoyed my time underwater here in the Bahamas, chasing hogfish and mutton snapper and African pompano around. So certainly a paradise for spear fishermen as well. And come here to uh, the Bahamas and test your skills with the pole spear because there's no, no spear guns allowed. Yeah, I think this is a great rule here in the Bahamas. It keeps the... Um the fishery intact and, and it's wild straight off the beach you can see amazing and, and world-class fish things that you you look at and go man I'm, there's no way i'm going to try and, and shoot that it's it's better we're talking be 50 wide. 60 pound cubera and bigger yeah. grouper running you know 15 to 20 kilos plus big african pompano wahoo uh nice hogfish mutton snapper so on a pole spear certainly a massive challenge yeah absolutely um, we enjoy, you know, the safety team um, always likes a fresh feed of fish, and so we take it upon ourselves to go to go and catch it in the best way we can and, and challenge ourselves with the pole spear. Yeah, and, and certainly something I've always been passionate about is, you know, with so much overfishing going on, um, you know, it's it, it's made it even a little bit hard for me to consciously continue spear fishing. However, freediving and spearfishing certainly the most sustainable way to harvest from the ocean, and so there's no bycatch whatsoever. No, absolutely. Yeah, um, you, you find your target fish, and, and you see, I want to have that on my dinner plate, and I only need that one fish for my dinner tonight. And so, hopefully, you'll you'll get that fish. And, and it's certainly a challenge. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it's also been one of the greatest learning experiences of my life. One fish, one breath. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely um, a level playing field. Especially with the pole spear. And so next up, Elise Madolo, the Cinderella story of the Origin ECN Vertical Blue Freediving Championships. Elise, five years removed from diving, pursuing a career in dentistry, has been here at vertical blue this week turning out national record after national record and she came up a little bit short on 89 meters the other day which would have improved on her own french national record today she decided to tone it down one meter and re-establish a new french record at 88 meters so so many of the athletes here rooting for elise i'm rooting for elise i know her countrymen in france are rooting for her as well and we're looking forward to what hopefully will be a white card performance from this stunning athlete. Elise makes the turn, slicing through the water with her monofin, attempting to establish yet again another French national record in constant weight. Encouraged by a fellow countryman, the French team.
face. Well into it, well into her free fall phase. Enjoying the, the still and relaxation of the free fall. So with every meter she descends a little bit faster as the volume of her lungs decreases. Mm -hmm. So becoming more and more negatively buoyant. And the atmospheric pressure uh, of the water increases as well. Yeah. So she's trying to stay totally relaxed to, to not really feel that pressure on the chest or the sinuses. See how she goes. And so there is a nice feeling, you know, from the surface to about like 40, 45 meters is like a kind of a little bit of it. And then the partial pressures of oxygen kick in and uh, the dives really become super enjoyable once you start that sink phase past like 40, 45, 50 meters. Yeah, even even shallow for, for a lot of people, Ben. Like, yeah. um, you know, doing the, the second level of the free diving course, they diving to um, 30 meters. Yeah. They, um, they get to experience a free fall and it, yeah. it really is like, Line, you know. I remember for a while I got hooked on variable weight because you just do the sink phase right from the start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Certainly like cheating, but uh, definitely something I introduce in my free diving courses to students, and they're just blown away yeah. that they get that sink phase right from the surface, and it's really like it's like flying. Yeah, absolutely. Elise had a beautiful turn off the bottom, coming up with the tag. So she's got a national record in her hood for France. Can she get back to the surface and deliver deliver a strong surface protocol for the judges? I think so. Elise has really owned these dives throughout the week. Technique is looking very good. Seeing her first safety diver would be a sign of relief once again. Lily Crespi from Daha Free Divers. And Jimmy Montananti from Sicily. Accomplished spear fisherman in his own right. And free diver. And free diver. Certainly a character. Yeah. Enjoys the kitchen as well. Removing a facial equipment. There's a signal. Uh, that is sure to be a white card performance for Elise Madolo. Rebounding from yesterday's performance, where she came up just a little short. Awaiting the decision from the judges. So a great memory for Elise to finish up with here at Vertical Blue. 2018, sharing a moment with Stéphane Thoreau, another one of the French divers. Such great camaraderie amongst these athletes. And so we're gonna take a little break here in the action. Alex Davis not showing for his attempted free immersion national record for the island country of Barbados. We'll be back for Vincenzo Ferry at 11 a.m. attempting 118 meter constant weight national record. So attempting to best Omar Leucci, one of the most informed divers of the event. And I'm sure there's no love lost between these Italian divers right now. No, they're sharing close quarters in their accommodation, but um, I'm sure the tension in the water is definitely there. It's certainly palpable. So Vincenzo Ferry sort of streaking out of nowhere here in the last couple days of Origin ECN Vertical Blue and attempting to snatch one of the national records for Italy away from Omar Liucci, who in this event this year has set a national record in every single performance. So Vincenzo Ferrari, Vincenzo Ferry hoping to dash Omar Leucci's hopes of three national records for the Italians. We thought that Davide Carrera was the only one with the potential to take away that national record from Omar. Not to be Vincenzo Ferry here to be the dasher of Omar's hopes. Can he do it? You'll have to stay tuned. 11 a.m. here at Origin ECN Vertical Blue. We'll be back for that performance. <laughs> 